Hello, my friends. This is Pastor Al Johnson, according to the Word of God.org. Uh, having a lot of fun with these videos. We're ready for video number 31. I'm going to do things a little bit different from this, this, this particular video. Um, it's short, but um, it's kind of difficult to read the King James. Um, I'm, I'm going to summarize it for you. Uh, it's a short chapter. Uh, well, it's not short in that, um, I think there's 40 some odd uh, verses, uh, but a lot of it is trivial, uh, not certainly the most significant things. But I want to I want to start by saying God called Abraham to be the father of many nations, and we studied that. And then Abraham had a son named Isaac, and Isaac was going to perpetuate the making of Israel, the country of Israel, through his sons. He had two sons, Esau and Jacob, and as it turns out, God wanted Jacob to be the son that would be used to bring Israel into existence. Esau is upset because Jacob gets the birthright, vows to kill Jacob, and that's when Jacob's mother, Rebecca, says, go to my brother Laban. He's got daughters. Find yourself a suitable wife and come back when it's safe. Now, we know that he went there. We know that he fell in love with Rachel, that he was going to work seven years for Rachel and then got deceived by Laban. Laban was, he was a deceiver, a trickster, if you will, and uh, he pulled the fast one on Jacob and cloaked with a veil Leah, and he married Leah instead of Rachel. And naturally, he said, what are you doing to me, Laban? I fell in love with Rachel, not Leah. And Laban came up with the excuse, oh, well, she's the older daughter. She has to be married first. So Jacob goes along with it. He works another seven years so he can marry Rachel, and that's 14 years of his life. He does that. After that, he works another six years to develop the flocks, the cattle, the sheep, and the goats, and, and uh, all the different kinds of cattle, um, a total of 20 years. Laban tries to cheat him many times, changes his wages 10 times during that 20-year period. And he's fed up with it. He says to his wives, get everything together, we're going. And he doesn't tell Laban is going, and Laban doesn't find out about it for uh, three uh, days, and it took him seven days to run him down, and by this time he had crossed the Euphrates River and up in the highlands in Gilead, and... Uh, Laban's not happy with Jacob, and Jacob's not happy with Laban. Somebody stole the household gods. Jacob didn't know it was Rachel. He did not know that, so he defended everybody in his camp. He said, you go ahead and find these household gods. If you find them, that person will be put to death. He actually said that, not knowing that it was Rachel. Well, Rachel was just a little bit sharper than her dad, and she kept Laban and, and the people that were searching for those goods from finding it. Now, that to me is a minor point, but I guess it could be major if it had turned out the other way. Um, but in the end, God intervenes. He told Laban in a dream, do not do any harm to Jacob. He knew Jacob was going to be the father of Israel. He was going to have 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. And that was his country. That was God's beloved country that he wanted to come into existence. So he wasn't going to have some non-believer, Laban in this case, believed in lesser gods, ruining that dream that God had. And uh, God was going to make it come true, and it did come true. Now, they make a vow. They finally get it straightened out. They make a vow. 
uh, not just a shake hands vow, they put a stone commemorative uh, there. Uh, I'm not going to bother you anymore. You don't bother me anymore. That's what Laban and Jacob said to each other. And basically, that's the way it was. Those are the highlights of chapter 31. Those are the main things. Now, it does say in Genesis 31, 1 through 18, how displeased um, um, Jacob was and why he was upset with Laban. And you can read the particular details there. It does say in Genesis 3, or 31, 19, 20, and 21, that Rachel was the one that stole uh, her father's uh, um, idols, images, if you will. Um, she was cut out of the will and she didn't like it. That was her answer to it. In Genesis 31, 22 to 33, Laban goes after him with a lot of people, a lot, his sons and a lot of other people. He's, he's really upset. God speaks to him and says, don't you hurt Jacob. No. Well, he hunts for the goods uh, that were stolen and, and he couldn't find it. And um, then in the, the uh, uh, Jacob uh, um, gives a complaint in 31, 36 to 42, a pretty hot complaint about, you cheated me. You cheated me, Laban. You changed my wages 10 times in 20 years that I worked hard for you. And you're upset, I'm upset. Then they decided to make a covenant and get it right, and they, they uh, did that at uh, Gilead. Either way, whether you go by the actual scriptures, and you've got to read in between the lines in some of these things. You've got to, you've got to read it, study it, read it again, study it a little bit. But with, this is a Bible outline. So I've outlined the major things there. And I hope it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Now we're going to go into, you see, now we're, we're, we're going to go into the fact that Jacob is going back to where God wants him to be. And the rest of the children are going to be, um, he's, he's already got Reuben, Simeon, Levi. Um, he's got Judah. Uh, Issachar and, and Zebulun from Leah, and a daughter, Dinah. Rachel has given him um, both Joseph and Benjamin. Um, Benjamin will come just a little bit later than where we are now, but um, th that will take place. And then their handmaidens. Leah's handmaiden is Zilpah. She's going to have Gad and Asher. Rachel's handmaiden is Bilhah, and she's going to have Dan and Naphtali, and that makes 12. And uh, that's important for us to know, because the 12 tribes of Ishmael, the son of Abraham and Hagar, they are going to fight with Israel for years and years and decades and decades and millenniums. They're still fighting today. So Jacob's 12 tribes that we're studying now, this is how they came to be. So it's important to know. Okay, let us pray together. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for chapter 31. And I did it in some form, Lord, because sometimes it's, it, it goes in many different directions. Now, it's easier to do that, and I hope that they, uh, hope the people that are watching and listening um, fully understood what was going on. And they can go back and read it and put it together. With your help from the sweet Holy Spirit, um, they'll, get, they'll get a great deal out of reading this chapter. Thank you, Lord. Lead, guide, and direct us, Lord. Help us to do the perfect will that you have for us. Help us to be your chosen people. Let us be in the right place at the right time for the right people, Lord. And let us tell the story of Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I'll see you tomorrow. God willing. Bye-bye.